Hey guys, Joseph Babaifa here coming at you with a new video. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, please be sure um, to like, comment, subscribe, most importantly to the video. Be sure to put in your own questions based on the topics uh, that we may be touching on or others that you may uh, be interested in learning more about, right? We've been getting great responses and we really appreciate all the support that the channel is getting. This question specifically comes from my, uh, my godson, Will, right? How you doing, Will? Actually, uh, finally got around to making the video. May how? Thank you for your patience, right? Um, he had a very good question, and his question was, Padrino, what is the difference between Olofing, Olorum, and Olodumare, right? Um, he had an idea. He said, you know, I know they kind of all reference uh, God, right? But I wanted to know what each of them meant and you know if we're using them correctly how are they supposed to be incorporated all these different things so we're going to go ahead and delve into that right so we're going to go ahead and start off with olofing right being that it's the one that i guess you could say is closest to earth um so when we look at the word olofing um it's a compound word like most things in yoruba are the first uh the first part of that word is olo right and the word olo means owner and uh the other part of the word is ofing which means law so when we look at the term olofing, it actually means owner of the law or governor, right? And what ended up happening in Cuba was, is this actually ended up becoming the term most synonymous with God, right? When you look at, um, you know, Western culture, um, Neo-Latin culture, diasporic culture, um, the owner of the law was seen as God, right? Being that politics and all these different things are so... Uh, um, present in, in the new world, it kind of got affiliated with that, right? That's one explanation as to why. But when we actually look at the word olofing, it doesn't necessarily mean God. It, it does represent a very high position within society though. And probably the reason that it got most associated with God or the concept of an almighty being was because of the person that that title was first associated with. So when we look at the word governor, and we look at, you know, the, the, the connections that it has. The first Olofing was actually uh, Odudua, right? And um, Odudua has a couple different titles. And the first one was Olofing and specifically Olofing Aye. Um, the word Aye references the world. So when we say Olofing Aye, we're talking about the governor of the world. And Odudua was the first one of this. You're also going to hear the, uh, the term Olofing Adimula, which means the governor. And then we have another compound word that comes after it, um, Adimula. Uh, so we have the word adimu, which means offering, and la means great, which means the governor who receives great offerings or large offerings, right, because of his position. Um, the reason probably that olofing, even though it was associated with odua, actually ended up becoming associated with the idea of a supreme being is because that's what odudua was on earth. And when we kind of look at that concept, um, you know, it was the most easily relatable, right? Um, because, you know, you have the idea of the governor of earth and all these different things. Well, we associate that with God. When in reality, it was the title that was first given to Odudua. Is it still legitimate to call, you know, God or loafing? Perfectly fine. Um, at this point, from a cultural standpoint, there's no way we're going to be able to get rid of it. So, um, and everybody knows what you're talking about when you say that especially in the Lukumi practice. So perfectly legitimate. So that's why Olofing, that word got associated with God because of Odudua's position and him being God-like, right? Him being the first Orisha, etc. So that's the first answer for the first phrase, right? Olofing. So that, that's that. So then we go into the next one, which is Olorum, right? Um, you're going to notice the term Olo here quite a bit because when we're talking about an almighty being, we're talking about an energy that owns things, right? Or that things belong to them, being that, you know, they created it. So the word olorum, once again, is a compound word. Um, the word olo, once again, means owner, and orum actually means the sky, right? So when we put them together, it means owner of the sky. And this actually really um, correlates to the sun, right? And it is one of the titles of God Supreme, right? Now, the reason being is because... If we look at um, the sun, it's a sky deity. And the Yoruba peoples in, at, in, um, in antiquity recognized the sun as being the source of all life. So if you're the source of all life, you represent this oneness and you're this, uh, you know, this energy from which we emanate. Therefore, you must be God because we're all born from it or we're all in need of it, right? Ifa also um, backs this up to where Olorun is one of the, uh, the terminologies 
or phrases used to reference God, right? But most importantly, it references the sun, being that the sun is the owner of the sky and it is the most prominent figure. You're going to see a lot of that explanation in the Odu of Ejobe, right? Just like the word Olofi, because in uh, the Odu Babae Obe was where um, Odudua was identified as Olofi Ngaye, right? When he was actually put in place um, to be able to govern earth. So you're going to see a lot of this um, in the Odu of Ejobe. So that's where Olorun comes from, you know, owner of the sky, the sun. That's why it was associated with God, because all life comes from the sun. Without it, no life is possible, thus being that divine presence and allowing for life. Right. So that's why that phrase got associated with God. Right. So that's the first two. We have Olofin, which means a governor or owner of the law, a very godlike title. And then Olorun, which actually refers to the sun or where life come from, comes from on earth. So the other um, word that you're going to hear, and in my opinion, is probably the most complete when it comes to referencing um, the idea of an almighty power is Olo Dumare, right? Um, let's break down this word. Um, we look at the word Olo once again, it means owner. Odu um, can be a reference to years or a, a time frame, right? And if we kind of break it down even more, Mare, um, we look at the word Ma, sometimes it means no or like a negative action. And then re or reo, which means to reveal, right, or to manifest. So when we kind of can, you know, contract all of these things together and kind of put them in a, a logical process, um, olodu, which means owner of the times, mare, that have not manifested yet, right? So we're talking about times infinite. Where you're also going to hear that translation that olodu mare means, um, you know, the owner of times infinite. So we're talking about the owner of the times that have not even presented themselves yet or manifested yet. So we're talking about basically something that's eternal, which is one of the characteristics that God has to have, right? And when we're talking about time, we're also talking about time immemorial, Im immemorial, forgive me. Um, you know, even before, you know, we were cognizant of time, even before we probably even existed, you know, this energy was present, right? So that's probably, in my opinion, it's one of my favorite terms to refer to God, but all of them are legitimate, right? But that, that's what term, that term uh, basically um, refers to. And another thing that could probably explain that would be that, um, you know, Ifa recognizes that one of the few things that um, weren't, wasn't created was time. So therefore, it was always present, kind of like Olod Dumare. And you're going to hear some debates as to whether Eshu was created or whether he was always present in the absence of light, right? These were kind of the energies that were there at the beginning. So when we're talking about this gentleman's title or, you know, energy's title, it, you know, it's talking about times, even when time first existed. So that's how epic it kind of gets. Right. So those those are the three terms you're going to hear when we're referring to the divine power. Olofin, which means governor, Olorum, which means owner of the sky or the sun and Olodumare, which means he who is the owner of the times that have not manifested or times infinite, infinite. Right. That which is eternal. So. I hope I was able to answer your question well, Will. Um, you send me quite a few <laughs> on frequency, uh, mihalo. Um, to everybody that's taken the time to watch our videos, we, we sincerely appreciate it. Um, please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, etc. cetera. Uh, Botanica Candles and more. We're doing wonderful. We got a lot of new things coming out um, that we're gonna be showing you guys shortly. Um, this is uh, one of the first things is uh, our altar here where you're gonna find all of our Odishas to be able to come and worship and a bunch of great things coming to the Wotanika as well. So any further questions, please feel free to reach out. And thank you so much for watching. From Joseph Babaifa, as well as Wotanika Candles and more, Burui Boye Bochiche, and have a wonderful day, guys. Blessings and thank you. Take care.